Hello everyone. Today's episode, or this video, is going to be about the C-130's wings. I've had a couple of questions on RC groups about how to disassemble and tweak some of the things in the wings of the Avio C-130. So I've got a wing here. This is from the Blue Angels version, obviously. And, uh, you know, each wing obviously has two engines or motors. <laughs> um, and um, all the flaps and all that stuff. And this one is kind of assembled, so the, the ailerons aren't hooked up, but we didn't need them for this. And so what I was going to show you is if um, you have to replace the servos in the wing, first thing you do is there's a piece of plastic here and here. And what you do is you would just get in there with a small screwdriver and just loosen that up. And you'll see it comes up pretty easily. It's just glued in there. It's kind of like um, foam cure glue, the mucilage as they call it in Europe. Uh, rubber cement kind of stuff. And like I said, that just comes right up. And you just put that aside. Now you've got access to the wiring. And you can do that with the same on the other side, this little piece here if needed. May or may not be necessary depending on how the model was initially set up. And then you would cut the tape out, or you could even just lift this tape up. Same kind of thing, just very carefully and very slowly so it doesn't tear. Just lift that up and you can get to the servo. Okay, and it's shaped kind of like the way the wire goes. So if you are careful and slow and preserve that, you can reuse it later. That's kind of the whole point. So, now you can get access to your servo's wire, and you'll see that when you pull it on the other end of it, it's tied into an extension which goes to the multi-pin connector. So it's real straightforward and real simple. So once you disconnect that, I should now be able to pull that lead all the way through, exactly like that. And if I pop the the rod off of the servo. I should have brought some bowling pliers, but I didn't, so bear with me while I just use a screwdriver to pop that off there. Kind of tricky sometimes, maybe just get there we go. Alright. So remove the uh, the rod. And now to remove a servo, uh, I'm gonna actually get a pair of pliers. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with a pair of pliers. So what you do is you just grab the servo basically anywhere you can. And I usually kind of go on an angle and just give it a couple of good twists. You can hear the glue loosening. You hear that crackle? And then once you do that, you just give it a couple of twists. It should pop right out relatively easily. Just like that. There you go. So now your servo's out. So if you have to replace them, that's how you do it. It's really not that hard at all. Um, and again, preserve your, your tape so when you put the new servo in there, you just tape that over. And I would just use a little bit of glue, just dot around it, paste that back on or glue it back on. Same thing with these plastic panels, just put them right back over the, uh, the wires, keep them nice and neat, and it'll look like you've never even done anything to it. Hopefully you don't have to do any of this, but uh, you know we all have mishaps, and um, so sometimes you gotta do some tweaks. And so, let's move on. We've also had questions about how to replace motors and ESCs. Again, this is also kind of straightforward. It's not difficult at all. And I will show you how to do that. So, obviously we have our two motors here, and they have the uh, cowls and the cell covers. So, using a screwdriver, Phillips, a little small Phillips, you can remove these cowls. There's one screw on the bottom, and then there's one on each left and right side. Okay. And now this cowl will just pop right off, just like that. Put that aside. Okay, so now we dig in and we look and see what our motor situation is like. So now you can see that you can get to the four motor mount screws just from the front. So let me dig in there and do that. Okay, so now the four screws are out, so now the motor will just pop right out. And your ESC should come out relatively simple, simply as well. So I can just kind of get to it here. Let's get that guy. Okay, well, all right, so there's the wires. Now the ESC on this one is taped in on the inside of the nacelle. The other one that I had uh, built and taken apart and investigated wasn't like that. So I'm kind of curious about that, but I'm pretty sure I can still get to it and it's just taped in there, so let's see here. There we go, I'll just kind of break that tape seal. And I will probably have to extend this a bit here. Now since there's two of them, they're attached together. 
and they are also connected with a lead, a servo, basically a servo extension type of thing. So I can do that. And so I would be able to then pull this out. And if I disconnected the motor leads, I could obviously pull the ESC out the other way from behind. But this is out in the front. These, um, I don't know exactly which ESCs, they, they're 18 amp, I think. No, 30 amp? I don't, know. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember everything. But um, these were proprietary, or at least somewhat proprietary for this aircraft, since they were made to be small and light and fit in there. So, um, but you can replace them with, with anything else that will fit the motors that you're using. And um, there is plenty of room in these nacelles to fit a larger ESC. So if you have to, for some reason, swap them out, you can go ahead and do it. It'll fit. And um, I think that's about it for these. If you needed to get any further into the wing, what I would do, I mean, uh, sorry, into this nacelle, what I would do is there's a, a section here where the, with a seam, you know, a panel line. And I would just use a good, sharp X-Acto knife and cut that section out and remove that. Do what you got to do in there and then glue that back in and hopefully no one would ever know you did anything. And the same goes for all this stuff. Like I said, if you keep these little pieces of uh, tape and the plastic and all that stuff and get it all back on there and glue it back on there, you'll never know anything had to be touched on this plane. And I had a brand new one that uh, someone had some trouble with and I said, you know, somebody in my club, they were having some trouble with it, and I said, give it to me, I'll take care of it. And I did have to do a few tweaks on some things and stuff like that. And I did remove all these parts, but I was just slow and careful and when I was done, they had no idea that I'd even torn into the wing like this. And that's what you want. So um, that's about it for, uh, for this episode. And so if you have any other questions about the C-130 or any other Avios, Durafly, or anything related to Hobby King, please reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, our support lines, and um, just let us know what's going on. And if you have a C-130 and you're flying it, good for you. It's a beautiful flying model. I fly mine as often as I can, and I love it. It's a really great model. Uh, I'm so glad we did this because, you know, for so many years people said that no one could do a cool foam C-130 scale. And we did it. And, uh, you know, I will say we nailed this one. Uh, the gray one looks great. This blue and uh, the blue angel scheme looks great. So we're really, really happy with this and we'll continue to have these hopefully for a good long time. And uh, so, again, until next time, signing off. Happy flying, happy holidays, and stay safe out there.